morning, everybody. Greetings from the cold and chilly Uinta Basin. Um, a friend of mine, Rich Dickerson, has been applying pressure to me to do something different. And so this will be my first attempt at uh, doing my own videos rather than an interview. In this video, I just want to do a quick introduction and I want to tell you one of my first Spanish treasure story encounters, if you will. Um, as some of you know, I go by Dan Lowe. Some people call me Daniel or Danny. I don't care. Um, born and raised in Utah, raised on a farm, got to play with all the good stuff like gunpowder, gasoline, and oil. Um, I want to tell you the story that I wrote about extensively. In fact, there's a, a good article on Toscoro.com. It's quite lengthy, but it'll give you details that you've never heard from the book version of The Mine of the Utes. Um, I can't remember what year it was, <laughs> but I and a friend were up in the Uinta Mountains scoping for elk and uh, we come to the near the top of a mountain and uh, rounded a corner and lo and behold there was an old mine dump and a mine with a metal door on it. I and my friend got out investigated a bit. I think this was about 1998, I want to say. And uh, we investigated the mine. We went down in, probably went in about 280 feet. Uh, there was an interesting little workroom right at the beginning. Incidentally, for those of you that know, this is the bear hole as it's been uh, tagged in the, in the past. At this time, the book that this story would appear in hadn't even been published yet. Um, I've seen a lot of mines, and up to that point, I'd been in and discovered a lot of old mines out in the West Desert and the mountains, but there was something about this one that just kind of drew me in. I wanted to know more about it because I couldn't help but notice the very large trees growing out of the mine dump. I had heard stories of the Spanish being up in the mountains and out in the West Deserts and so my curiosity was piqued, and when I got back down to Salt Lake City, which is where I was living at the time, um, I stopped in at a friend's place of business, metal detecting shop, and I walked in, and he greeted me in the usual way. Hey, Dan, how you been? Where you been up to? I uh, told him we just got down off the mountain, and we had spotted an old mine up there and I wanted to know more about it. And I explained to him where we were and all about it. And I think he knew which mine I was talking about because he said, hold on a minute, I got something for you. And he went back in the back room and he brought out a yellow manila envelope. <coughs> and uh, he said, I want you to take this home with you and read through it and let me know what you think. And so I said, all right. I took it, went home, 
set it on the cupboard, took care of things, went and sat down at the table, pulled out the yellow manila envelope, pulled the papers out, turned two pages, and there was a picture of the very same mine that uh, we had visited. Now the papers that I was looking at was the transcript to Steve Schaefer's book that would soon be published. And this is when I first read about and first heard about the mine of the Utes or what some people call the Josephine mine. Well, there's a lot to this story and a lot to the mine. But I think this is one of Utah's best kept secrets. There's been a lot of people that have deemed this story as a hoax. And although I understand why some people would call it a hoax, I assure you it's no hoax. Um, it's kind of like the Tuma Macquarie site down in uh, southern Arizona. That one's been deemed as a hoax also by so-called experts. Um, one guy even went as far as writing a, a list of the reasons as to why it was a hoax. And the funny thing is, is every reason that he listed is the reason that I know it's not a hoax. Because I'm pretty sure he hasn't read as many old documents from the archives as I have. <laughs> um, one of the excuses that was used was that they used Roman numerals. So what? They've been using Roman numerals ever since the Romans created them, including the Spanish and the Castilians. I've read Roman numerals in I can't count how many old Spanish documents. The other excuse they gave was the use of the word reditero. And uh, they claim that this is a modern uh, slang version of the word deritero. This is not true. The word reditero appears in many, many old Spanish documents, even as far back as the 1500s. You want me to produce copies? No. <laughs> anyway, point being is, the mine of the Utes is definitely a real mine. The Josephine and the story of Garcia is definitely not a hoax. There were many things that Steve did not put in his book. Things that he either knew or did not know. I don't know. There's many articles that appeared in the newspapers long before. Uh, as I recall, he and others who have spoke of this particular mine, they talk about John Young finding the mine and finding the wooden door and so forth. And, and I don't doubt that this happened, but it sure as hell didn't happen at the bear hole. <laughs> um, there were other people that found that mine prior to John Young, the Burt boys, Burt family. Um, these articles, I believe, are included in the article that I did uh, back in 2022. I think the title of the article is, Will the Real Josephine Please Stand Up? Um, if the story is true, and I'm using the word if as a benefit to some who may or may not have a belief. If it is true, it's one of Utah's larger cash sites. Today's value in gold only would be about one billion. And that's just the actual gold value. Uh, silver would probably be somewhere around 27 million. I want to insert this part as I intended to 
tell it, but I spaced it off. Chalk it up to old age. Um, after going up to the mine site several different times just to investigate things further, uh, one day when I got back to Salt Lake area, I went to visit one of my friends in a professional manner. We'll leave it at that. And uh, this guy was a roadside treasure hunter. His father was much more involved in the Spanish treasure hunt and very well connected with the tribe, the Ute tribe. Um, in fact, he had uh, what he referred to as a little old Indian woman whom he used to visit with quite often. And I'm sure that in some of the book stories you've heard little snippets regarding this little old Indian woman. And anyway, I walked into my friend's place of business. And uh, again, he greeted me. Hey, Dan, how you been? What have you been up to? I told him we just got down off the mountain checking out an old Spanish mine. And uh, he asked me where, and I told him. And it seemed to ring a few bells with him. Keep in mind, he had never heard the story of the Josephine. He had never heard of Steve Schaefer. Uh, never heard of the book. In fact, I don't think the book had been published even yet even then. <clears throat> um, but he said, I have a story to tell you. And I said, okay. And he says, when I was 10 years old, in fact, it was on my birthday. He says, I know because my dad um, bought me some baseball cards and I was putting them in the spokes of my bike. Yeah, some of you know what that means. Others won't. Um, and, uh, my dad's little Indian woman friend came to visit him and he was talking to her for, you know, a half hour or more. And he told me that she came to him and told him that she was very appreciative of the fact that he had been so kind to her over the years. And she had something to tell him because quite frankly, he was her only friend, real friend. And she proceeded to tell him the story about how her grandfathers had killed some Spaniards up around Hoyt Peak. And that it was given to her family to keep the mine covered and hidden. And she told him that she was getting too old to do this and no one in her family wanted to continue with it. They had no interest and she didn't know what else to do. So she wanted to give the story to him. Well, she drew him a map and bid her farewells and he came to his son who was my friend and said hey do you want to take a drive up to the mountain with me he said sure he says so the following day they loaded up and headed up to the mountain he says all the way all the way up there that map was sitting right next to him and uh, he says he recalls coming around the south side of Hoyt Peak <laughs> and described the drive from there up to Hoyt Peak. And he says, and we parked on the edge of a ledge right next to a big old pine tree, a twisted up pine tree. And those of you that have been up there, I think you know what tree I'm talking about. He says his dad grabbed the map and he got out and walked over to the edge of that ledge. And he looked down. You know where the pond is. 
he looked down and he looked at the map and he looked at the down again and then he pointed and he said it's right down there now those of you that are familiar with that area you understand what I just told you he was definitely not looking at the bear hold now the whole story has its problems it's national forest property of course you can prospect all day long on national forest and dig holes all you want um, but you know the minute that you uncover it and discover its location the feds gonna be all over you like flies on shit um, I don't know what more I can tell you about it without going into great detail. I would suggest that you read the article, go to www.toscoro.com, and uh, those of you that enjoy that kind of thing and who have it to research things thoroughly, I think you'll see that uh, I've covered things pretty well. Um, anyway, thanks for joining me today. Feel free to leave a comment uh, if the comments are open. If they're not open, you can find me under Toscoro on Facebook where you can leave a comment. Uh, you can leave comments at www.toscoro.com. However, they probably will never get published uh, I just don't have time to read them. <laughs> so don't forget to like and share and let me know what you think because if this works out in a positive way, I may begin to do this on a regular basis. Um, thanks again and thanks to all those who have supported me in the past and I don't know what I would have done without you. Thank you and have a good day.